My name is Mark Messina. I have a PhD in nutritional science. For the past 25 years, I've been focusing on the health effects of soy foods and soybean isoflavones. I have an appointment at Loma Linda University. I am the president of my own nutrition consulting company and also I'm the executive director of the Soy Nutrition Institute. This afternoon, I'll be talking about the evidence indicating that if soy foods are consumed very early in life, that is during childhood and or during the teenage years, there is a very good chance that breast cancer risk will be reduced substantially later on in life. We have population studies in support of this hypothesis, uh, rodent data, and we also have several proposed mechanisms how eating soy when young can reduce breast cancer risk uh, during adulthood. And importantly, it appears as though consuming just one serving of a soy food per day is enough to reduce breast cancer risk. So I strongly recommend that all young women and girls consume at least one serving of soy on a daily basis. I'm also going to be talking about the impact of consuming soy on the prognosis of breast cancer patients. And this is a, a very controversial topic. For many years, oncologists would routinely recommend that their breast cancer patients avoid soy foods. However, the evidence published over the past 10 years shows just the opposite, and that is it suggests that women with breast cancer who consume soy will actually be less likely to suffer recurrence of their disease and less likely to die from breast cancer. So I think everyone should be consuming soy on a daily basis. In regard to the type of soy consumed, there are fermented products and unfermented products, and both of these have a number of health advantages. I don't think that there really is a significant difference between consuming organic soy foods and soy foods that are not organically produced, at least with respect to the impact on an individual's health. Uh, fortunately, if one is concerned about uh, consuming foods that aren't organically produced, there are many options on the market so people can consume soy foods, organic soy foods, if that's what they prefer. But from my perspective, I don't think that there's a, a big difference with respect to health effects. With respect to organic versus non-organic soy foods, I really don't think that there's much of a difference. Uh, both of the foods are going to contain ample amounts of isoflavones, which are, are very uh, interesting compounds that may have a number of health benefits. Both types of soy foods are going to provide high quality protein. They have a healthy fatty acid ratio. So I think it's really just a personal preference, but from a scientific basis, I don't see much reason to differentiate between the two. With respect to the issue of soy consumption by breast cancer patients, we have lots of different types of evidence indicating that women with breast cancer can safely consume soy foods. We have a large number of clinical studies that have involved uh, healthy women, women at risk of developing breast cancer, and women with breast cancer. And these studies have looked at the impact of soy consumption on markers or indicators of breast cancer risk, such as uh, breast cell proliferation or the density of the breast. And these studies, without any kind of inconsistency, show that soy consumption does not adversely affect breast tissue. And in addition, we have population studies involving over 11,000 women with breast cancer. These studies were conducted in China and in the United States. And these studies show that women who consume soy after a diagnosis of breast cancer are actually less likely to suffer a recurrence or to die from their disease. So we have very strong evidence indicating that uh, soy foods can be safely consumed by breast cancer patients and in fact may actually benefit breast cancer patients.